Former Governor Chafee has been talking about some issues, so we had to get him in tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Now, you're seeing this program on Wednesday. What time is today? May 10th? Uh, Wednesday, May 10th. You may see this program again because, you know, Governor Chafee is no slouchy guest, you know, as we say in the business. But uh, I'm frankly surprised that he's even in the public domain. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you've got an itch to scratch. We'll figure out over the course of the evening whether it's an itch to scratch on just speaking out on the issues or whether there's a higher purpose involved here. I'm going to tackle him if he doesn't tell me what's going on. So, uh, figuratively, of course. Great to have you in. Thank you very much for tuning in to my state of mind. I'm not going to hit a rundown this evening uh, simply because there's so much to cover with uh, the former governor. However, I mean, if you're seeing this uh, on uh, Wednesday the 10th, you are certainly chatting at the water cooler and at the kitchen table about that which is the only story out of Washington today and that is that the FBI director has been fired. Let me run down a couple of headlines here. Uh, there's the letter, Maria, the dun 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 the signature uh, spooks me, by the way. It's a crazy signature by the, the president. Uh, call me fired uh, and, and uh, how we learned about it, which is absolutely disgraceful that he would learn about this on TV literally while he's with other FBI agents. There's just no way to do business. I don't care if you think he needs to go or not. It's just not the right way to do things. Uh, the president's been tweeting about this and suggested that, you know, when all this stuff calms down, everyone's going to be happy about it. And this is all he, this is one of the tweets, as a matter of fact. Uh, lost confidence of almost everyone in Washington. Of course, you know, a lot of the Trump advocates today were saying that uh, he'd lost confidence across, uh, confidence across the country. I, I don't know where that comes from. I, I, I have seen no polling data that tells me that James Comey uh, had rattled the cages of America. If you had, uh, I'm sure you've been up and down with him, though, because, you know, when he had to say what he did about Hillary Clinton, the first press conference that shook that election, then the second letter uh, was like the nail in the coffin, so to speak, uh, for Hillary. And um, his latest uh, appearance in front of the U.S. Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, uh, you know, he made a mistake there. So clearly he has not been 10 for 10, you know, batting a thousand. At the same time, I don't know that the public is really shaken up about him. Donald Trump finally spit something out as he was having a photo appearance with the foreign minister from Russia today. Fire Director Comey. Why did you fire Director Comey? Because he wasn't doing a good job, very simply. He was not doing a good job. And, of course, this is received very partisan-like. I mean, you take a look at the cable networks last night. I tweeted out, Fox, it was overdue. MSNBC, it's Nixon all over again. The truth probably lies somewhere in between. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but here's uh, Chuck Schumer rattling on today. No director Comey was leading an investigation in whether the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians. A serious offense. Were those investigations getting too close to home for the president? Look, this, this, we need to take a deep breath on, on all of this uh, and not react so incredibly um, hyperbolically, if that's a word. Uh, and we'll work this thing out over the next couple of days. Stay tuned to the radio from 3 to 6 on WPR as we talk to smart people about this. And also tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll focus on the entire episode along with some other international affairs. All righty. That's that for that. Uh, the former U.S. Senator and Governor is here. Wouldn't want to get really into that. We didn't invite him here for that because that was just kind of breaking news, right? But uh, he has been speaking about issues like this. Here's a headline uh, that got everybody's attention regarding the Burrowville power plant, right? And then uh, here's one of the folks in Burrowville very upset about what Johnston recently did to make a water deal for that plant. The people in Woonsocket brought out 600 people who said, no, you're not going to take our water. That's for the future generations. You're not going to put us downwind of this dangerous pollution. That town is a lot poorer than Johnston, and those people had the courage and integrity to stand up and say, no, keep your $18 million. We want Rhode Island. We want it the way it is. Welcome back. Thanks, Dan. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, this is where we first began our public conversation when you decided to get into the argument on the Burrowville power plant. So why don't we just take some issues as we go down the line and, and uh, check them off one by one. What irks you about this project? There's a lot of issues, Dan. The water we just heard uh, from the woman from Woonsocket that said they rejected the water uh, deal despite that it would have brought $18 million into Woonsocket. Uh, the traffic in those narrow country roads and it is a rural place i don't know if you know yeah. pasco and yeah. know those narrow Been roads up there seen the yeah. site yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So rural place is changing the character uh, of the town that people move to for a rural experience. And then uh, do we really need this power? Uh, it's going to increase 38% of our CO2 emissions in Rhode Island, 38%. That's a big number. And uh, we can replace, if we do need the power, we can get the hydropower from Quebec, which they're continuing to expand up there. And I've been up not only to Labrador, but to Quebec uh, to see what's happening and the environmental impacts of those projects. And that's cleaner, it's cheaper, and it's uh, very reliable. The wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine as far as solar and wind power goes, but the rivers flow downhill. So there are a number of issues. You all add them up and it's a slam dunk. This shouldn't go in. To, uh, well, you know, it's really hard for the average person to try to figure out um, what the real answer is when it comes to ISO, the capacity, what, what's already been purchased, what won't be, you know, the plant really right now is, is planning on building at half of its capacity based on what they've already uh, made deals on here. Uh, you're suggesting that uh, the, the, the likelihood that we will have some plants here become obsolete will be, will be recoverable not by a plant in Burrowville but by by power coming from the north? I'm a big advocate of this power from the north. Uh, the Premier of Quebec said at a meeting of the governors when I was governor of Rhode Island and the Eastern Canadian Premiers, there were uh, 11 of us there, and he said, we have the chance to be the low-cost green energy capital of North America if we work together. We've got the power, you've got the need, let's work together and make this happen. Low-cost green energy capital of North America. I believe it. I believe it. You didn't, and, uh, you didn't like it. That's what we want. That's how we started the Industrial Revolution with hydropower. And that's what fueled the, the great America uh, economic boom. Uh, it started right here in New England. Now we have a chance to go back and do it again. So, so I'm a big believer in hydropower from Quebec. So Woonsocket said no to this uh, component of water supply, but Johnson said yes. The mayor of uh, Johnson was here telling us about that recently. This is this is an, a purely an economic decision. Um, I'd be I think I'd be derelict of my duties if I didn't obviously just entertain it. Yeah. And you know, as I said, uh, they said if Bar if uh, Woonsocket decides not to go forward, would be the primary. Uh, you got a problem? No, he's right. He, he made an economic economic decision for Johnston. Right. I can't blame him for that. Right. Uh, and now it's up to the Energy Facility Sightings Board. Uh, so put yourself in a governor's position again. Uh, it's hard to do hypotheticals, but you think you'd be weighing in hard against this if you were sitting as governor? Yes, once again, Dan, we have a chance to be the green, low-cost energy capital of North America, and, and uh, natural gas doesn't do that. Would you be we influencing? Have more than ever, even Rhode Island, with all our coastline, and with climate change happening, and with extreme weather happening, and with carbon dioxide being named as the culprit for all of that, extreme weather, more than ever, if I was governor of Rhode Island, I'd be very concerned about adding 38% to our CO2 emissions. Would you be influencing the, the commission that's got to make this decision? Uh, I, that's, it's a quasi-judicial, uh, no, I, do, I would not. That's, uh, so, so is it easier to talk about this from a citizen point of view than a sitting governor's point of view? No, but at the same time, she can, uh, the governor, Raimondo, can say I'm opposed to it and let the, uh, let the three appointees to the Energy Facility Siting Board render their own decision. That's she, the way it should work. She's actually said, I think, that she approves uh, at least the concept on this. Yeah, Interesting. We'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see what happens in Burrowville. Speaking of uh, Governor Raimondo and some of the things that are happening there. Uh, can I add one more thing on sure that? Sure, Ken. Of course. Uh, they just had a meeting with the opponents of the Burrowville Power Plant with Mayor Avedesian because they're going around the state trying to get uh, council resolutions in opposition. And I learned something new this morning, and that is that the construction workers, one of the big arguments in favor is there's going to be a lot of construction jobs. It's a big project. They say these such specialized construction that these workers come in from uh, where they build a lot of these types of power plants, Alabama, Louisiana. Those imported? Uh, imported. They come in. They, yeah, they'll stay in the motels and use the restaurants, but then they're gone. Mm. All right. You know what? Why don't we pause here? We'll come back. I want to talk about this Wexford project. Uh, Governor Armando is all in on picking some winners and losers with their economic strategy. I want to hear what the former governor thinks about that. Stay with us. There is the design for the new Wexford project and the innovation center that Governor Raimondo is banking on really having a, a bang on, on the economy here. And 
Listen, you, you got to give her credit. She is all in on this notion that you provide these incentives. Of course, you know, when 195 was finally cleared out, uh, it has been difficult for 195 to become developed. I have never understood why the state and the city can't get together for what I would say is a consistent rate card for incentivizing anybody who wants to come in and invest there. Um, I will pine about that a lot. I'm more interested in what the governor has to say about this. Are you uh, supportive of this project? No, I've never been supportive of massive taxpayer-funded incentives for business, and the studies support uh, my philosophy. And I tell the story as mayor of uh, a company coming in saying, what can you do for us with incentives? I say, we don't do that here. They closed their briefcases and left and came back a month later and built their company in Warwick, Rhode Island when I was mayor. And so the, the evidence, not only personally, uh, by all the studies done na uh, nationally, are that they don't work in the long term. And too often in Rhode Island, we're doing short-term thinking. And the New York Times study that I referenced in my opposition letter to the members of the Commerce Corporation Board uh, pointed out that it's a transfer of wealth from us regular taxpayers to powerful corporate interests. And we saw that with hedge funds, Dan, transfer of $70 million in fees down to these Wall Street brokers for hedge funds that bombed, by the way. Now we're seeing it again transfer of wealth from us to powerful corporate interests. I'm, no, it, it alarms me and well, angers me, the, the, frankly. The, there's some similarities, um, eerie, actually eerie similarities between uh, the 38 Studios opposition that you offered when you were running for governor, uh, when then Governor Kacheri was still custodian of the state, and the communication that you offered to the now same board, different name, on the Wexford project. Um, do you, do you find, other than just kind of timing and opposition, any common worry? Yes, of course. They're very intertwined. Here we go again. And this is a lot of money. We're not talking a few hundred thousand. This is $40 million it's added up to so far. And uh, so it's big money. And uh, as you said earlier, uh, picking winners and losers. And banks should be doing that, not politicians. And the New York Times study said that too often politicians are looking at their next election. Oh, let's get some cranes in the air. The future be damned. And that's what the New York Times said. And they studied it nationally. And that, that just scares me. It's not the way I do business. So uh, the Commerce Corporation more or less said thank you, uh, the board, thank you for your letter, and they passed it unanimously. Yeah, I noted that. Uh, shame, shame, what? shame. They should have at least asked some good questions. Show us another study, Governor Raimondo. Former Governor Chafee is his study. Uh, show us one that this does work in the long this term Wexford, before we vote on this. This, this Wexford thing is they interesting. They coward. I was, I was yeah, disappointed. Yeah, you were. I, I can understand that. Uh, the, it's kind of an interesting thing because uh, you, you have the Brookings Institution and their, and their study here, Wexford, uh, and it's uh, it, there's there's a lot of mutual interest in what seems to be just kind of a a design plan on what to do in communities. They've been in St. Louis. They've been in North Carolina. Uh, it seems like we've got, we've got to dig in more as to what's going on here, but uh, it seems like the, 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 the milk is spilt and we're, 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 we're going to get this project one way or the other. What else would you like to see at 195? Uh, what, the companies, we uh, set the table and that's what I believe in, whether it's the um, airport connector down in Warwick when I was mayor. We connected or started the process of connecting the rail line to the airport, closest Amtrak line uh, to an airport in the country. Uh, that's the type of thing you want to set the table. We move the highways. That cost us the taxpayer an arm and a leg uh, to open up that real estate. Uh, so we set the table, and companies will come. All you have to do is have good schools. We have a beautiful state, obviously, uh, and good infrastructure. And the companies will come. Speaking, you have to be patient. Speaking of 38, and consistent with everybody else, treat everybody equally. Gotcha. Speaking of 38, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't confront you with this because I though, although you sh you deserve and take credit for you take credit and deserve credit for the lawsuit, which has garnered back a lot of uh, losses there. Yeah, about 60 million. I am convinced that your disposition for that project caused you to have your eye off that ball. You know, that's been my criticism. Uh, I, I I think that you had a fiduciary responsibility to manage that thing. And I think you weren't aware when that thing was falling apart. No, it was all the game uh, Kingdoms of Amalur that came out in February. And we were all rooting it for, for it to be successful. Please, this game Kingdoms of Amalur, came, when it came out in February, please be a blockbuster. It didn't. It bombed. And then the company folded in April. It was Friday the 13th. So 
only, they came out in February, only a month and a half later, maybe two months later, uh, they, were, they were asking for more money. And so we were just gambling. And Dan, I've heard this criticism, and it bothers me because the facts don't support it. Why didn't Massachusetts pony up hmm. to keep Kurt Schilling in Massachusetts? Why didn't venture capitalists oh, pony up? It's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. It's, uh, it's I, like, no disagreeing with you from the beginning. I looked at Don Kateri and I said, Don, really? And, and he said, listen, it's going to work. It's going to work. Uh, I, I just think that once you become governor, you've got to do everything you can to make that sucker work. I'm not so sure that you did. Of course I did. And the main thing is shovel the money that uh, Governor Kachiri had promised. Hmm. And man, did that hurt. Another 11 million, another 16 million. That was my job. I'm not in the uh, game. I've never even played a game business. And I did go meet with Kurt Schilling after I got elected and kind of broke bread and said, I'm here to support you. Yeah. Good luck with Kingdoms of Amalur. That's, yeah. the, that's the gamble we're on. Well, he makes you the villain, that's for sure. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the way it goes, right? Yeah, that's where it goes. All right, when we come back, we've got some other stuff. Car taxes. I didn't give him the extra money he wanted. No, no way. Uh, well, paw socks, all that kind of stuff. Stay with us. Basically, the idea is you open up your ballpark to the public. It's not just this building that gets locked at the end of the day when there's no game on. It's really it's an open place through which people can wander. Uh, we want to hold events. We want to have community groups come and use our spaces. There's no reason a ballpark shouldn't be utilized by everybody, um, you know, when it's not being used for games. Uh, that is Kim Miner from the Paw Sox talking about the park on Pawtucket or in Pawtucket. And today we have brand new uh, information that the uh, Apex site is that which the Pawtucket Red Sox say is the best spot now. Of course, Republicans have been talking about no public money, uh, or at least making sure this is a general assembly decision. Other headlines reflect on that that we have. Um, your take on, on whether or not we ought to invest in, uh, in a new facility? If, I, if, we're, if it were my money, I'd be very concerned about the demographics that are attending baseball games. I like baseball, but when I take my children to them, they can't wait to leave. Another relief pitcher coming in. The left-handed batter, here comes a right-handed pitcher, whatever it is. <laughs> and, and the long delays. Uh, and I'd, th I'd be very concerned if, th if this has a long-term future. Uh, younger generation uh, playing lacrosse. Uh, different sports, uh, it would concern me if it were my money. Well, that's an interesting and take. And the I mean, facts also support the attendance has gone from what five hundred thousand down to two fifty or something. Well, it's not that low. It's, okay. it, it's gone from seven hundred to more like four fifty. But the, okay, the, the, the 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 that's an interesting that's still take. A good big drop. In, in general, uh, you know, I have seven hundred to four fifty yes. for a reason over a decade. Uh, okay. It's not the the, the facility. Because the facility is gorgeous. Well, they would suggest that it in part has to do with the facility, um, but it, you know it is a fascinating uh, conversation in terms of uh, you know the, the the market here. There's no doubt it's a it's an older audience. Uh, then again, you and I are getting old. We'll still be around for another 15, 20 years if God blesses us, right? So I don't know. Uh, I would like to see the paw socks though pony up a serious amount of equity. That would have to happen, correct? You well, agree? look at the parent club. I mean, they're. They're invested in having the AAA facility be the best possible, and they're shoveling out hundreds of millions of dollars to ballplayers. Hey, throw some down here to your AAA facility. It makes sense to me. All right, let's talk about the car Shouldn't tax be situation. Us, the it'll be interesting to see how this plays along with the car tax. Nick Mattiello, the Speaker of the House, uh, and the Governor are kind of uh, battling on the same kind of concept. Here's what the Speaker has said recently. I'm not saying I'm going to do it next year or three years or five years. I'm saying in this budget, as difficult as it is. Beginning July 1. Beginning July 1. The budget Affecting that the what, half a year of the car tax for people who are taxed on an annualized basis. And most people are actually taxed on a fiscal basis from their, from their communities anyway. We'll figure out how to do that. But okay. if, if the, the, the tax boards have to send back refund checks, I think that's a good problem that I'd, I'd like to see occur. All right. So anyway, Nick Mattiello wants to eliminate the car tax completely over five years, which would be a $200 million state investment back to the communities, meaning that's where they're going to have to find the state money. And Governor Raimondo is looking for a 30 percent reduction in the valuation real quick. My budget cuts every single car tax bill in the state by at least 30 percent. Let's be responsible about it. Let's make sure the cut is sustainable and affordable. 
All right, what's your take on this? Well, in my, all my four budgets as governor, I always talked about education, infrastructure, and workforce development, and always lowering taxes when you can. Every politician wants to do that. So these all tie in, whether it's uh, investing in URI, RIC, and CCRI, lowering tuitions, I think free is a big step. Uh, property tax is a car tax, I know, because I was mayor. They, these come out of the local governments. Uh, that's admirable, and you want to do that. And um, well, can at the be, same time, we have these uh, anti-business truck tolls coming down the pike. Right. And I'd factor that in. Why are we going the first state in the country to put a big billboard at our border, truckers not welcome? Well, I couldn't agree with you more on that. But and I don't think I got a clear answer. Do you support either one of the plans by the speaker or the governor to reduce the car tax? It all depends. And this is the way it works, of what kind of money you have. And the May revenue estimating conferences today, I believe, and they're finally going to come out with how much money they have or don't have uh, to do all these things you want to do to grow Rhode Island, whether it's a lower tuition, which I did as governor. I continually put money, and the facts support this, to URI, RIC, and CCRI. I invested in uh, helping the cities and towns, especially our distressed communities, Providence, Pawtucket, Woonsocket, West Warwick, uh, East Providence, uh, Central Falls, saved them from bankruptcy. So I have a record of doing what they're talking about. All right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. So, quick, do you support the two-year free tuition um, the program freeze, from the governor? too far. America was made great by low tuitions at our state college. Whether yeah. you go to the University of Idaho or uh, that's what University of California. I find this to be amazing because you and I probably are like three for five together on, 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 on some of these issues. So we got a pretty good scorecard because I agree with you. But your answers tonight are... They sound like a candidates. My record. Now you're I'm, on, tackle I'm on the me. record. Here comes the tackle. Here comes, but you <laughs> sound. But Gov, you sound like a candidate. I'm a taxpayer. But, uh, taxpayers don't talk about their records. Candidates talk about their records. All right. Well, I have some experience that helps as a taxpayer Understood. talk about the future of the state. I know. And so you have all the reason. And, and, and I'm all, alarmed about where we're going. You're alarmed. I am. Too much money going out the door. And at the same time, we're putting up truck tolls that put up a big anti-business sign at our borders. I don't know. Look, you have a right to opine. I, I'm, 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 I'm puzzled that you would be this active if you didn't have a mission in mind. Listen, there's one thing I know about you. I mean, you and I have had our roundabouts and some tough ones. But I know you're one competitive son of a gun. You are a competitive son of a gun. You know it, and I know it. When you put your teeth into something, you don't quit. It feels like you're getting back in the game. Am I, am I remiss in making that analysis? No, you talked about an itch and whether it needs to be scratched. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I got a bit, little bit of an itch based on what I'm seeing happening, the transfer of wealth from hardworking people around to the powerful corporate interests. Those aren't my words. Those are... Time Magazine, uh, you feel uh, New like York you, Times. You, you feel uh, like you got unfinished business? Uh, no, I'm more concerned about the future of the state. Okay. We have three. I have three children. But there is an itch that is children. being scratched right now. I'm concerned about the future of the state, and I'm a right. taxpayer, and I have children. All right. Good to see you. Final word, and we come back. Stay with us. Sounds like a candidate to me. It's to scratch, don't you think? <laughs> Going to be interesting. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, the Washington controversy and uh, a whole bunch more tomorrow night. And, of course, we'll see you on the Radio 3 on WPRO. Good night.